Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work By Composer X, it would be Work Y. And now Composer X is Brahms. And this was a toughie. It was a toughie because a lot of you have chimed in immediately with your picks for Brahms. And those picks, frankly, were, were pretty predictable. And for the most part, most of them were symphonies. We're not doing a symphony. Brahms only wrote about a dozen orchestral works. And this is the problem. The symphonies are far and away the most popular things he did. However, however, as a composer, most of what he did was vocal music. They were It was songs. But his songs are, for the most part, aside from the lullaby, as good as unknown. Maybe the serious songs, but that's about it. He wrote exquisite songs for ensemble. You know, small choral works for ladies' choir or small chorus, the Liebeslieder waltzes, things like that. Absolutely, exquisitely beautiful. He wrote fabulous piano music. But Brahms, more than anything else, was a composer of chamber music. Not in terms of quantity, that's the vocal stuff, but in terms, I think, of qualitatively in large forms. Most of what he wrote was chamber music, so it has to be a chamber work. Some of you have suggested the late chamber works, like the clarinet quintet. Some of you have suggested the piano quintet, which I think is an extraordinary masterpiece, but that's not my pick. My pick is the second string sextet in G major, and there are a lot of reasons for it. First of all, it's a, a early maturity work. It was the work when he really found himself and found who Brahms was. It has a bigness, a bigness of vision, of form, of, of, of expression, of range of feeling, an uninhibited outpouring of lyrical sentiment that is really extraordinary in Brahms. Uninhibited outpouring is not normally how we think about the symphonies, although that's not really fair. They are in their way. They are what they are in, you know, in terms of Brahms' own symphonic idiom. But I really think if you want to get to the nuts and bolts of Brahms, the chamber music is the stuff, not just the quintet, the piano trios. I mean, the string quintets, they're fabulous. The quartets, meh, not so much. But really, I mean, the piano quartets, the piano quartets, well, that's a different thing. Those are astonishing, especially the first one and the second one. The second one is, is huge. It's 50 minutes long. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I, I really, really, really think that we have to go with chamber works. Now, why the string sextet? Well, like I said, because it's that work of Brahms' early maturity, because it's so uninhibited, because its thematic material is so beautiful, but still quintessentially Brahms, because it has the most magnificent, integrated, cohesive, organic, formal construction. And if you're curious about how that works, please do have a look at my, my talks on how to listen to great music, where I t talk about this, this sextet, movement by movement by movement by movement. It's four different talks, um, one for each movement, and then you know, a summary of the entire work. I think it's one of the great works of chamber music. The other reason is that sextets are very rare. They're very rare in the classical period. There aren't any string sextets other than Boccherini's, who invented the, invented the form. He doesn't get any credit for it, of course, but he did, and his sextets are marvelous. They're beautiful works. But after Boccherini, there's practically nothing until we get to Brahms. And his two sextets are two of the truly great works for small chamber ensembles. So there's that originality element, too. Because, you know, Brahms is not usually considered to be an original composer. I know, Schoenberg wrote an essay called Brahms the Progressive. But that's not the way we usually think of Brahms. We think of him as a romantic classicist, as somebody who worked in in established forms, established media. But where he was experimental was in the chamber music medium, where he wrote, you know, the horn trio and the other things and some other stuff. So they were a little bit, a little bit off the beaten path. I mean, the piano quartets too. I mean, aside from Mozart's, there was virtually nothing. And Brahms wrote masterpieces in those forms because, because they were available. Because he could be Brahms, he could be himself without having to feel intimidated or worry about some of the previous masterpieces of earlier generations. And for that reason, I think, again, he could sort of unbutton himself a bit. And the unbuttoned Brahms is someone we don't see all that often. 
in his mature period. He was he played his his uh, cards close to the vest, as they say in the business. And so, for all of those reasons, all of those reasons, because the idea here, remember, is not the most popular. It's not your favorite. It's the most representative, the most representative of the totality of what he could be as an artist. And I think for that reason, the G major string sextet is a, a, an extraordinary work, a real milestone in his development. And, and I mean, there are many other great works, of course. I mean, he was a genius composer. He wrote lots of stuff. But if I had to pick one, it would be the first movement, second subject. Ba da, ya da 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 da, ya da da, ya da da, ba da 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 da. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful while being at the same time an absolute textbook clinic case of sonata form that acquires momentum as it goes from theme to theme to theme until you get to the end. It's it's one of the most beautifully constructed, powerful, I mean powerful, the way the symphonies are powerful, not loud, not by virtue of volume or color, but by virtue of harmonic tension and rhythm. One of the most powerful passages in all of music, the beginning of that quartet, which is just a squiggle, do, 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 do. Just very, very simple and, and rhythmless to some of the most, to the, the, the current of, of, of a mighty river by the time you get to the end of the exposition. And how he gets from one point to the other point is just one of the most rewarding things you could ever possibly listen to. And for that reason, all of those reasons, I know that the evil god Cancrazans, who wants to destroy everything, will be very happy to accept the G major sextet as Brahms's entrance, as representative of Brahms, and I think a good reason, hopefully, to spare quite a bit more later. Um, I, I, you know, I think it's Brahms's best foot forward. So that's that. In any case, keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. The rest of the list is down below, as usual. Take care.